What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I had to make a follow-up video, a separate video. I talked about this, touched on this a little bit on my post-fight on the Sergey Kovalev, Cedric Agnew post-fight video I did yesterday. And I have to kind of elaborate and break off into some separate things regarding the same players, Kovalev, Adonis Stevenson. They're going to war on, on Twitter, so I'm back with another edition of Ego's Fighting Words. I want to give you my thoughts. Um... I said some of them, like I said, on yesterday's post-fight video. As far as the whole scope of boxing, it just fucking pisses me off that fans have to deal with this time and time and time again. And these promoters, these networks, it's like, me personally, if you fuck me over or you burn me or I make a gross, like, big mistake, I try my damnedest not to make that same mistake. But with boxing, having no governing body... These promoters, these networks, they fall into the same fucking pattern. They make the same mistakes, and history repeats itself. So, I felt like after the biggest example of this, Pacquiao and Mayweather not happening, I mean, there's still a chance it could possibly happen, but both fighters have their own tough fights. Bradley rematch, and then uh, Mayweather's fighting a power puncher in Maidana. So we got to wait to see the outcome and see how both fighters look in that fight before we start talking about Mayweather Pacquiao again. And this has been going on 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. This fight still didn't happen. So there was a lot of money on the line, a lot at stake for reputation and bragging rights. Didn't happen. So that's the probably the biggest example just because it had stood the chance to build and make the, the most money. And there's been others. I would say top rank, uh, Juan Ma Lopez versus Yuri Orkis Gamboa. At a point in time, this was the fight to be made. A lot of people talked about it. Juan Ma Lopez was looking good. He had power. Um, Yuri Orkis Gamboa, they were calling him the baby Tyson. He looked like a freight train, and he's very athletic. And it was a Cuban style versus a Puerto Rican. Good matchup. Nowadays, since, you know what I mean, fast forward to the future, Gamboa's been highly inactive. He's with SMS Promotions, no longer with top rank. And he's been inactive and had some spotty performances recently. Juan Mar Lopez got destroyed by Orlando Salido twice in Puerto Rico. And then he got surgically taken apart by Mikey Garcia and had to really resurrect his career. Me personally, I thought he should have retired, but luckily for him, he didn't. He fought um, Daniel Ponce de Leon again and won that rematch. He, he had a little bit of problems, got wobbled. But he was able to pull the trigger and stop Ponce de Leon. So that was a good win for him. The point being, that fight should have happened when it was in its prime. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can have a, per a perfectly good piece of steak and you marinate it. But the whole key is to not let it go to waste. The whole key is to get it marinated. Like, you don't want to marinate it for a month and to the point where the steak's fucking rotten. And that's what these boxing promoters do. They're not marinating it to perfection. It doesn't need to marinate for a whole month. But they allow it to. To the point where um, you become like uninterested. Like you're not hungry. You don't even want the steak. Like You know what I mean? If I had a craving for a steak right now. And I, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to make it marinate. I'm going to put all the seasoning and the juices. That's good. But if I let a month go by, then... I might not even have a craving for a steak. I want Mexican food, pizza, whatever the case is. So that's what these promoters do. They wait too motherfucking long for these fights to make these fights happen to the point where people lose interest or the fighters themselves lose and the fight is no longer appealing because they look suspect. They don't look like they have the, the, hot, the hunger or the desire to compete at a high level and it's not the same fight. Now it looks like we're having that and this is the trend that fans have to deal with. Yuri Orkis Gamboa versus Mikey Garcia. The the parties that be got along um, and got together alongside the round table to discuss this fight. And guess what? The end result is we can't make this fight. Everybody's pricing themselves out. Some people are saying Garcia. Some people are saying Gamboa. The end result is still the same. We don't know if we'll ever get this fight. It's a good fight. It's a fight that needs to happen. And I think it's a fight that'll prove a lot for the winner. Mikey Garcia, if you want to make him a big star over at top rank in HBO, this is the key to do it. Take someone who's undefeated like Gamboa, who has the namesake, and he's um, an impressive fighter, and he has the fanfare, 
and beat him and beat him in a, in a shocking or good fashion. Same thing with Gamboa. Spotty recent performances, you beat Mikey Garcia, who's just ascending his way to the top and looking good in his performances, and you're back on track. But these promoters for greed, pride, whatever the situation is, don't want to make this happen. They they rather let their egos, no pun intended, get in the way. It's all about money. It's all about, oh, it doesn't make business decisions. It's all about um, taking less risks and still milking the, the fans for money. And I'm just sick of this. So regarding this video, Donna Stevenson and Kovalev, great fight. This would establish who is the light heavyweight master. You know what I mean? This is for light heavyweight supremacy. And you got two guys who say they want to fight, mostly Kovalev. Kovalev has openly just been like, I want to fight. He hasn't really talked about money or anything. And then you have Adonna Stevenson, who's to a degree acting like a prima donna. And they both did great things last, last year. They both um, fought multiple times, had stoppage performances. So I really thought this would all equate to a crescendo where you had these guys meet in the middle and face off to see who's the best. Now, Adonis Stevenson is kind of acting like, you know what I mean, he got with Al Heyman, and I can't knock him for making the right business sense, but it's like, I don't, I'm a type of, I'm old school. I used to see this like in high school or in street fights or whatever. It'd be two people fighting, and one person was really acting scared through the fight, and as soon as like police came or like teachers came, depending on where we were, then all of a sudden, the person who was acting scared acted really bold. And they're like, oh, hold me back. Get the fuck off me, B. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to fuck him. You know what I mean? And they're just kind of putting on the theatrics. I hate that because I'm from the old school. And that's what I see is the trend nowadays. Everyone gets behind Twitter and then they go crazy and talk about what would happen. Knowing the protection is they're behind the keyboard and whether it's the fans or the fighters, some fighters know that this fight is not likely based on the Cold War or whatever, and they just spit venom. And I don't care to hear that. Like, it's, it's cool. I report about it and it's entertaining, but I care more about seeing the actual fight happen. I don't care what you think you want to do or what you're going to do. I want to see you do it. And that's kind of where I'm at with Stevenson. This is what Stevenson had to say. He said, tell your mama... Kathy Duva to stop crying and call um, Michael and Al Heyman to make the fight happen, bum. He also said, when Sergey fight me, he will stay at the hospital. Mama Duva will come see him. Tell Mama Duva to call Al Heyman and make that easy payday happen. Um, so he's just going off on Twitter. He also said that he lacks defense. He can't fight for shit, slow with no defense. And like I said, all these things are entertaining but I want to see it. Same thing with Kovalev. Kovalev is saying he wants to fight. I just want to see the fight. I don't care. I'm not really here to play the blame game. Even though um, I do think Kovalev and his side is pushing more to make this fight happen than Adonis Stevenson. And the fact of the matter is, I think it's a 50-50 fight. Which is the, the, the worst part about it. Because these fights that we want to see... They're all close fights. It's not like, I mean, you could say Mayweather will easily beat Pacquiao. You could say that um, Mikey Garcia will surgically dismantle Yuri Yorkis Gamboa. You could say Kovalev will run through Adonna Stevenson or whatever your viewpoints are on any of these fights. But guess what? Seeing is fucking believing. The end. You know what I mean? I thought Edislandi Laura was going to surgically remove um, Angulo's head. And he was in the fight of a lifetime. I mean, he was put in a deep, dark place. And he had to really work and hustle to get that win over Angulo. So, boxing is boxing. You know what I mean? You never know what's going to happen. Kareem Mayfield, I thought Thomas Delorme fight would be... Um, I didn't think he would come out the way he did in the early rounds. Mayfield, that is. So, seeing is believing. You, you could have an opinion on what you think would happen. But what does happen is not always the case. A lot of people thought Canelo was going to be too big, too strong for Mayweather, and then he dominated. Some people thought that Pacquiao, after a knockout loss, was going in against the wrong person, a, a big puncher in Brandon Rios, and he doesn't have the, the fighter instinct. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know who Ruslan Provotnikov was when he fought Timothy Bradley, and no one necessarily expected Bradley to be in a more crucial fight 
and a war with Ruslan than he was already in with Pacquiao. So, again, you can say whatever you want and seeing it and actually it come into fruition could be something totally different. So, as a fight fan, um, someone who has no problem, I don't just stream every fight, you know what I mean? I paid like tons of money, you know what I mean? If you just tallied up all the money that I've paid to support boxing, it's 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 a good amount, you know what I mean? Whether it's buying boxing DVDs and like Mike Tyson and Roy Jones greatest knockouts and highlights um, or paying for pay-per-views, whatever it is, I put money into this sport. So I feel like as a fan, I deserve to see the fights that make sense, that would make money and see them happen when they need to happen as opposed to waiting till it's watered down and the fight don't mean a fucking damn. Like if Donna Stevenson loses to a lesser opponent, then the Kovalev fight just looks dumb. Because in my mind, if Kovalev didn't convincingly beat Agnew, then why the fuck do I want to see him fight Adonis Stevenson? To me, as a fan, that's going to kind of put it into your mind. Like, yo, if he can't beat Agnew, how's he going to beat Stevenson? Vice versa. If they lose to lesser competition. Um, same thing with Pacquiao. Pacquiao and Mayweather could have been a great fight that goes either way. However, if he can't convincingly beat Bradley, then we just have to assume that Mayweather would have beat him as well just because they have kind of a similar style in terms of slickness and stuff like that and it might not have been the case the thing that i don't like also about the scope of boxing is this if you get someone who's on the rise you get someone who has momentum who has power or good boxing skills good boxer puncher i.e a keith thurman and based on his lack of popularity if you will and i'm not saying he's not popular amongst boxing's hardcore fans but He's not a casual name. He's not like someone you just readily hear. So you put him in these situations where he's fighting like tomato cans or people he's clearly better than him. Then you have the chance for an upset because Keith Thurman is not getting the big money fights. He's not getting the Sean Porter fights. He's not getting the Mayweather or Pacquiao fights or whatever. The top guys at welterweight, which he feels he's ready for then that leads to the possibility of overlooking an opponent who just comes in hungry, who has even less fame than Keith Thurman has, and wants what he has, while Keith Thurman has what, or he wants what, like Mayweather and the Pacquiao's have, that worldwide recognition at welterweight, and you could overlook an opponent, you know what I mean? And then now his career's over, so you, you, you brought him along slowly and then put, competition that he really shouldn't even pay like to me julio diaz the only thing to be gained from keith thurman julio diaz to me is an impressive showcase performance for keith thurman and to see how he disposes of julio diaz as opposed to or compared to sean porter or kendall holt or one of the guys that julio diaz has previously faced like amir khan that's it i mean i don't give julio diaz much of a shot to beat keith thurman he could and that's kind of, like I said, one of the dangers. You put him in there with competition, you might overlook him. Just kind of like Danny Garcia overlooked Mauricio Herrera. Like, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm beating Lucas Matisse. I'm beating the big names. Zab Judah, Eric Morales, Amir Khan. What the fuck is uh, Mauricio Herrera going to do to me? And then look at how that fight turned out. A lot of people thought Herrera should have won. So there's so much that's wrong with boxing politics and certain people who deserve opportunities not getting fights. And they're getting pushed with you know I mean lesser competition and they're hungry for it and then you also got guys who are at the top acting like divas and it's just boxing is is a fucked up game right now we like it because it's still a roller coaster event just let me know what you guys think kovalev adonis stevenson i'm done talking that's all i gotta say as always hate comment or subscribe to the next video it's ego signing off